Hi, it's Rick here from the Cat Jewelry School and I was asked about creating a, a rectangular pavé using some princess cut stones, 2mm stones, uh, in rows. So it's not a traditional pavé layout but it is a linear sort of uh, pavé layout. So I just wanted to show and explain a technique that you can use to create uh, that style of pavé. Let's have a look now. So the first thing we'll do is we'll come to our curve menu and we're going to draw a rectangle. Now normally when you draw a rectangle the default is to draw from corner to corner but we actually want to center this on our X and Y axis, the green line and the red line. So we're going to say we want to center it. So just click on the hyperlink there at the top of the screen and it will ask you where the center is. So where the green line meets the red is zero, so we'll type zero and press enter. So that's our origin or center. Now the width, this rectangle is going to be 12 millimeters in width, so I'll type in 12 and press enter, and the length is going to be 14.6 millimeters, so 14.6 and press enter. So there's our rectangle. Now uh, that is the area that our pavé is going to sit in, so we'll extrude this, so we'll select that. We'll come to the Surfaces menu, and in the Surfaces menu you'll see the option to extrude curve. Just make sure your curve selected. Click Extrude. Now I have the option to create a solid shape from this, so you can see in my menu uh, I've got solid set to yes. So just make sure you've got that set to yes in your settings on, on your installation and we'll give this a distance of 2.2 uh, .2, or actually we can probably just use two millimeters I'll just type in two and just press enter now uh, this is sitting on the curves layer so that's going to get a bit annoying in terms of seeing any curves on this uh, surface so we'll put this into another layer now you can easily do that if you click on an object you can come down here to the uh, layer names here, just click that and you've got a whole bunch of layers that Panther sets up by default. So I'm just going to put this actually into the cutters layer. I know this is not a cutter, but if I just click on the layer name, it will push the selected objects into that layer. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want a reference line because we're going to uh, create a row of gemstones and then we'll copy them across um, the plate there. So we'll use the curve tools again and we're going to use a line tool here. We're going to draw a line from this top edge across to the opposite side. Now just make sure that when you're drawing objects like that using uh, any of the line tools or curve tools that you've got some object snaps set down here at the bottom of your screen. The important one and most important one is an end snap. So just make sure that's on. And I've also got a mid snap on, which is handy, and a few others, but don't worry about them for now. Just make sure that you've got an end snap on before you draw that line, otherwise it won't draw it from one point to the other correctly. Okay. Now that line is going to be our center line for our gemstone, so uh, if we use it in its current position, the gems are going to be halfway on that plate and halfway off it. So I've calculated some distances already, so I know that I want to move this line 1.6 millimeters along the red axis there. Now using the gumball and make sure your gumball's on at the bottom of your screen. Using your gumball, if you type in a value, if I want to move in the direction of the red arrow, I can just type in a value. So just click on the actual arrowhead, not on the little dot there, on the arrowhead itself. And you can see it's remembered my measurement from last time, which is 1.6 millimeters. So just type 1.6 and press enter, and that's going to be our center line for our gemstones. So let's come over to the gems uh, menu here, and we'll use the gems in line command, uh, or along a curve I should say. So select that line. If it prompts you with this, it's just asking you which you're trying to pick, so just make sure you pick the curve and we'll come over to the gems along curve command. This will default to some round brilliant cuts. 
they're oriented on their side but that's fine we can select an object here to orient them to so click on object and just select the extrusion that we've got which will rotate the girdles the right way up next thing is we need to change the gem cut so you can click the down arrow there and select a princess cut here and the next thing we want to do is obviously change the size of the stone so the default is 1.5 millimeters these are going to be two millimeters so just press two and then enter on your keyboard and what we'll next do is we'll just come to the top view so come down to your viewport tabs down at the bottom of your screen and select top and the way this works is it's uh, the stones are laid out from start to end of the line you can adjust that but it's easier probably to adjust the length of the line and that way we can adjust uh, the quantity of stones to fit in the area that they're on so just scroll in and you'll see a faint line there if you just click on it what you've got is uh, that line selected and we've got our gumball active now with our gumball you should know that apart from being able to move along axes and also to be able to rotate an object you can scale objects so if I want to scale the length of this line I can use uh, this little green square here to adjust its length and because my gems on curve tool is currently open uh, the gems will update based on the new length of the curve so we can finesse it and fine-tune it to fit the area that we've got let me just adjust this a bit and let go they're too tight So I'm just keeping an eye on the spacing uh, of the gemstones as well between each stone I think that looks okay so we'll go with that so now I've finished with the gems on curve tool just make sure you click the validate button the check mark just to close out of that tool and next we need to place some prongs here so we'll come to gem settings and just make sure you select the gemstones first and we're going to use this uh, row prongs now it's the right idea we just need to space these a little better so what I normally do is uh, if this move horizontal I'm just going to drag this all the way across to the left hand side in fact does it go any further yeah that's better and I'm just going to change the size the default diameter is 0.6 I'll just make these 0.7 millimeters and press enter because these prongs are going to be shared with uh, in a, another stone on the other side here we just want to make them big enough so uh, you better to have them larger than too small the other thing we'll just check is the height of these prongs so let's come back to our perspective view and you can see they need to be lengthened so we can adjust the height here point four now just adjust them whatever you need whatever you think will work for your situation for setting them and that's it we can close out of this tool now now I think it's best to switch to the top viewport so we'll click on that and I'll scroll out a bit here now just to explain what we're going to do now we need uh, a copy of just the right hand side of prongs because we're going to copy this row of stones and the prongs on the right hand side uh, into another row next to it and keep doing that until we get across to the other side so you'll notice uh, in Panther when you've closed out of a tool things like prongs are grouped okay same with gemstones so we need to break that and we can do that by ungrouping them so if you come to the edit menu here you can select here in the second row to ungroup and you'll see that each of the prongs are now individual okay so what we're going to do is draw a bounding box around all of these prongs make sure you draw that bounding box from left to right sometimes people will draw it from right to left and what happens is it selects everything that you've uh, passed over 
if you go from left to right that will select just whatever's within the bounds of that box okay now we don't want the line selected so I'll just draw that a little bit narrower and because the gemstones are grouped I can just simply hold my shift key down and select the gemstones and they're the objects we want to copy we don't want to copy the prongs on the left hand side of those stones now we're going to come to the transform menu and we're going to use the copy command or oh, actually that's the move command it's actually this one copy and what we want to do is the copy command is neat because we can give it a reference point to copy from and we can specify what the spacing is and we can keep copying you know in a, in a row if you like or in a line so let me just show you how that works so at the top of my screen it's saying point to copy from again make sure your object snaps on I've got my end snap on here at the bottom of my screen I'm just going to click in the bottom left hand corner here of this extrusion and it says point to copy to at the top of my screen so I'm going to set a value now the stones are 2 mil I worked out 2.2 mil spacing so the distance I want to move these is 2.2 mil so type in 2.2 and press enter and you'll see now that your cursor is uh, you can see there's a little red line and a little sort of uh, crosshair uh, where that is and that sets my my distance so if I hold my shift key that will constrain to a horizontal movement and just click anywhere to the right hand side because it doesn't matter how far your cursor goes it will f it will be um, placed at a 2.2 millimeter spacing so just click there holding shift just click once now that's our first row now we can quickly do the other rows by just saying that we want to copy from the last point so yes we do want to copy from the last point and from the point that we've just clicked we want to use the last distance which is 2.2 millimeters so it might seem complicated but it's pretty straightforward now if we just click and hold our shift key down and click once and then again hold your shift key down and click to the right once and again holding shift click to the right one more time and uh, it's trying to place some more stones here which I don't need so I can just press the escape key on my keyboard and you'll see once you're finished with that Panther's going to start creating some dynamic commands here on the right hand side but that's basically it so if you go to your perspective view you'll see that you've got this nice neat row of uh, pave laid out there and really the last thing you need to do is just uh, create cutters for those stones so you can select each individual group of stones holding shift and come to cutters the cutters menu here and use the gem cutter uh, this is in green because <laughs> um, that's the default color for cutters but what we need to do is just adjust things uh, like maybe the azure so we can adjust the depth just to get them lengthening out there you can adjust the taper so there's a taper that you can control as well and also an important thing is you can adjust here uh, the stone seat depth and, and taper and the girdle offset now what I normally do with the girdle offset is um, that's set to the geometry of the gemstone so the stones are two millimeters square the girdle is obviously uh, two millimeters and the cutters here are generating a cut uh, exactly two millimeters I normally just have that a little bit less uh, so I'll just drop this to a minus value and that's pretty much it so you can just click the check mark to validate that and 
let's just uh, do a boolean with those cutters so if you come over to the tools menu there's a boolean union and there's also a boolean difference we want to use a boolean difference here so click on that it will prompt you for uh, the object that we're cutting away from so easiest thing is probably to select that from the document click the arrow and click the main surface press enter and then we want to select all the cutters so here under object B if you just select the gem cutters here they're all grouped and that's it so if we have a look you'll see you've got that nice cut on the underside of that sheet there and if we just click the validate button we can close out of that and that's our job done let's just switch across into the panther display mode the little black sphere here and you can see that a little better and let's just hide the gemstones so uh, we'll just hide one of them so uh, let's come over to gems on curve here the bottom one here and click the little eyeball to switch that off and there you can see the cut off of those stones I'll just switch that back on by clicking on the eyeball okay that's it I hope that helps. Bye for now.